All right. Yeah. Well, welcome. Um, I'm going to jump on here and share my screen so we can get into the presentation. Does that look good? Looks All right. good. Excuse Perfect. Me. Equipping the classroom for distance learning. I would like to welcome everybody first and uh, introduce our panelists here. Right next to me, looking amazing, is Jonathan Boaz, Vice President of Sales for Phoenix Audio. Hi guys, nice to meet everybody. My name is Ryan Root, I'm the Director of Marketing here at Phoenix Audio. And all the way from the East Coast, we have Paul Richards, Chief Streaming Officer, PTZ Optics, and Tess Protesto, Social Media Marketing Manager at PTZ Optics. Guys, say hi. Hey everybody. Thank Thanks you for having us. For having us. This is such it's gonna be so much fun. Awesome. Yeah, it really will. This is a this is a very interesting topic. Um, still very new to a lot of people. Um, I'd say, you know, as I've seen the registrants come in, uh, there's a lot of people who probably work with distance learning on a daily basis. So some of this may not be brand new to you, but I think what you'll find really interesting is kind of the, the solutions we have for maybe some of the problems you're facing on a daily basis. And also some, maybe some interesting statistics that um, that'll refresh or educate you on new ways to look at distance learning. Um, I also want to mention, you know, some of the things you can expect in this, webinar you know we have a really cool case study provided by ptz optics uh, from a very well-known university so we'll get to that later on um, and you're going to find out some practical applications for uh, for audio and video um, integration into um, the modern day classroom and how that's really shifting today uh, jonathan i will hand it off to you um, so real quick distance learning so distance learning obviously everybody knows what that's all about um, but to sum it up in, in a couple sentences um, it's all about how to get um, collaboration tools into a classroom environment um, so that people can won't be confined necessarily by the space of a classroom in order to get their education um, and they can be anywhere almost in a way in order to um, in order to obtain that that information that knowledge and that content that till now i would say you were confined by the boundaries of a classroom itself right um, we're talking about this beyond the walls exactly mentality, the and then really taking education anywhere and to anyone exactly and, and that is the goal of distance learning there's a lot of advantages of it that we're going to talk about um a bit later about how okay. it allows people to work at their own pace allow them to um you know work whenever work wherever however they'd like to do it um but in a nutshell, it's all about the collaboration tools um, um, in the in the environment. So mm -hmm. move on to the next slide. Yeah. So a couple of stats that we found interesting that we wanted to share with uh, everybody. Um, not to dive too deep into all the nitty gritty that's over here, um, but some stats that were provided from based on analysis that was done from 2016, 2017, 2018 is still waiting to come out there. It's being summarized as we speak, but. Um, the majority of rooms right now are currently um, hybrid rooms. So that means there's a huge transition that's happening in the space where classrooms are not only confined to only being studied in the room, um, and there, there's a demand for them to be um, hybrid type of environments, right? Where there's both video collaboration and um, the ability to be able just to study in the normal way, the traditional way. Um, that that people know of so if it's in a total of 64 percent of rooms currently um are utilizing that um that hybrid environment which is huge right so that means there's still a lot more to be filled um and that's where things are going to right now right um on the other hand while it's not 100 percent there yet a very interesting aspect that we found was that the large majority of both students and um, educators are looking to get more online courses available for students or students would like there to be more online courses available to them, um, which is a huge trend that is worth recognizing, which means this isn't a fad that's probably gonna disappear. This is something that is continuously grow um, until I would argue and say, everybody has the ability to have that option at least at their doorstep to be able to study um, remotely, um, or on demand in order to 
you know, get educated. Right. And now we'll hand it over to PGZ Optics. Why don't you take this one, Tess? Yes. First off, thank you guys so much. We're happy to be here, PTC Optics. What we wanted to touch on initially before we get into the type of equipment necessary to equip your classroom or educational space for distance learning, we wanted to talk about some of the ways that um, organizations are using distance learning because there are a few different ways as Jonathan and Ryan just touched on. So we're going to start with some of the benefits of distance learning including easy access to material, no more need for a traditional classroom um, sizing. It, you, know, you can expand well beyond the size of a traditional classroom. Students are able to collaborate and learn at their own pace and work with faculty and peers virtually and physically. And the uh, cost is going to immensely be reduced for um, for students and for the education um, organization alike. We know that one is an important one with all the student loans and the, just how important that is in the world today. So hopefully, hopefully we can help the cost, cost, cut those costs because wow. Mm, they're brutal. Everybody's worried about those. <laughs> Moving forward slide. here. So I'll pick up on the hybrid classroom here. Uh, we have a great case study from the University of Southern California. I was just there in Los Angeles and more and more everyone's moving online. And the issue really is that teachers have really been trained to get up in front of the classroom and teach. And that's what right. has always been the goal. But by flipping the classroom, and it's really proven, it's well documented, that flipping the classroom, bringing the homework into class and doing those engaging hands-on um, activities inside the classroom, and then having the students at their own pace when they're ready to, to, to learn and digest the content, to, to learn online. And the issue becomes, how do the teachers build engaging online courses for the students? And that's really where the disconnect is at this point. I've talked to a lot of teachers. They haven't been trained in video production. They don't, maybe don't have the right equipment to record all of their lectures. Now, lecture captures come a long way, and we're definitely seeing uh, great growth in this space, but that's what's driving it, is, is there needs to be a way for teachers and, and universities at large to quickly and easily create online video content to build out these courses to help support this new style of learning. Just want to point out an interesting comment from the chat here from Kevin Powers saying, for, uh, from the university's perspective, there's actually a, a great way of increasing revenue for the university by offering more virtual seats to the classroom to make more money by being able to extend the amount of students that are able to participate in each course. So that's definitely something to take in consideration as well. Hopefully yeah, there you, might Anna. be some cost savings, but also so, some cost benefits in, in some different ways. So I mentioned this, this briefly in the last slide. So the, the flip classroom is essentially flipping the thought of having homework done at home and the teaching all done in class. It's actually flipped now and we're gonna deliver the content to students online. And that means they can learn at their own speed, place that they're comfortable. They can go back and watch something. You know, we talk about there's bullying in class, but there's also pressure in class from students. And you kind of remove all of that pressure. And now it's not a one size fits all learning experience. Now students can go home and learn at their own pace. And then when they come to class, they're more confident and they're doing engaging collaborative work in class. They're applying the material that they've learned in class. And they're also able to address some of the questions that are, have arise from uh, that online learning. You want to take this one, Tess? Yeah, and, and we briefly touched on this where there's this paradigm shift happening um, with students transitioning from learning in classroom to at home. So they're able to access content outside of in-class time. They're able to focus more on learning at their own pace, work uh, in a team-based collaborative method, much like you do in the workplace to better prepare them for the workforce when they do graduate college. And it's just a way to create some engaging content that's interactive with students virtually as opposed to just a um, teacher speaking up front of a class during in-class time. All right. Answering some Q&A questions as we go through this. Uh, here's the next slide. 
So the video element. So what do teachers need to quickly and easily equip classrooms to capture lectures? And that's what we'll talk a little bit about in the next few slides. To answer Paul's question, yes, we are using a PTZ Optics camera right now. This webinar is kind of a great representation on some of the uh, types of things that can be done with this type of technology. Of course, um, Ryan, I believe you're also using a PTZ Optics camera, Ryan and Jonathan, as well as Phoenix Audio Technology as well. Yeah, exactly, we are. So, so we're talking a little bit about lecture capture. We're going to have a great case study at the end of this presentation that's really going to drive a lot of these, these things home because there's a lot of juggling that an IT department and audiovisual support department has to support. Are we, are we talking about live streaming? Are we live streaming to a learning management system? Are we doing a webinar with Adobe Connect? Are we using WebEx? Are we using online collaboration tools? There's so many tools out there for distance learning, if you will. For example, one of my favorites is teachers having um, basically appointment times. Oh yeah, office hours, office virtual hours, office yeah. hours. Boy, I wish I had that as, yeah. a, as a mom attending school. So if I could have just met with my professors today. at home, that would have been amazing. Uh, so there's so much technology out there, um, but it generally, the lecture capture portion of it is something so important to create these online courses to support the education that is hopefully going to start happening at home, anywhere, on students' time. So there's a lot of things we'll talk about, including video annotation, which I'm doing right now here as we're using Zoom webinar. And we'll, we'll dig into a lot of this. There's a lot on this slide, so let's just leave it at that. Uh, we're going to get into a really great case study that, that covers almost all of these topics. We'll be touching on streaming and recording cameras, specifically the PTZ Optics cameras, if you couldn't have guessed. That's the uh, camera we're going to be talking about today with multiple different features and types. Let's quickly take a look at this just to give you guys some idea of some of the popular ways people are bringing video into their environment. So one of the popular ways, and we'll talk about this at our case study, is Ethernet. Okay, Ethernet is so powerful. It can do video. You can control your camera. You can bring audio in over Ethernet, and you can um, you can bring your you can connect you can power the camera as well. So one single cable can actually be a solution for so many universities. The university we'll talk about later connects just one Ethernet cable, and then brings the video across campus because we have these massive local area networks at universities to really do some great stuff. Now that's certainly a cost saving factor for universities. It certainly is. Now HDMI is of course, everyone knows that, very popular with learning management systems, with codecs, with traditional video. It's also great to give the teacher a confidence monitor so they can kind of see what's on camera. And then one that might be a little bit less popular uh, or at least less commonly known is SDI. And then of course, USB. So those are, those are some of the most popular connectivity uh, ways of bringing video into your lecture capture, learning management, or just simply a web conference call like this. Fantastic. Moving forward, we will talk about those specific models that PTZ Optics offers in terms of connectivity and uh, optical zoom. And now we're going to talk about the audio element, which is the specialty of Phoenix Audio. So Jonathan, take it away. Yeah. So, you know, obviously, in addition to having great visual, which you want to have, you know, especially when you're um, looking for students to be engaging with the content you're providing them, they want things to look good. You know, that's that's important. So getting good cameras is critical for that. Um, but you also want to make sure that you have great audio, um, especially in the difficult environments where you're going to be adding these collaboration tools in the um, in your classrooms and, and those type of environments. Um, from what we've seen out there for many universities, um, the, the two key features that are critical to really make things a good experience, um, it's on one hand coverage, right? It's critical to have a complete coverage for the entire space where you're needing, um, you know, to get recorded or getting broadcasted or the pickup range that you need. So, you know, when you're doing a broadcasting type of environment, it's, you know, you can use a microphone and handheld mic or a lapel mic of some sort and get that achieved. But when you're now dealing with a classroom environment, the challenge changes dramatically, right? How do I get coverage in the complete environment that's in front of me right now? Um, in addition, that's something that's also really important to remember. We're going to show some examples of that is the flexibility of the environment as well. 
Um, so flexibility can go on two hands is right. It's to be able to utilize multiple interfaces, kind of to what uh, Paul was addressing earlier. You have USB, you have all these different types of connectivities that you want to be able to use. Um, but in addition to that, the rooms themselves a lot of times need to be flexible, right? Um, and there's a great comment here that's um, um, brought up over here um, is that the best video can always also be destroyed by bad audio. Absolutely. So it's really important to really mm -hmm. put that um, in place and really get that right um, in, the, in the different environments. Um, so what equipment is being used at the East Coast Studio and Phoenix Audio Studio? So Phoenix Audio here, you know, we're using our Condor microphone array. It's actually attached to an AV cart here in one of our conference rooms. Makes yeah. it really easy for us to move throughout the office if we need to. Um, but yeah, we'll yeah. talk more about our products in a moment. Yep. Yeah. Thank you for that question. Um, so a little bit about the products themselves. Um, we have three core products that basically allow any IT or AV department from any university to address any type of environment that they need um, utilizing these products. Um, so um, our latest and greatest is our Stingray um, DSP. The key aspect of that is um, no programming. So any IT guy within five minutes can learn how to actually know how to program this. Um, that is for your rooms where you want to have the installed microphones, the installed speakers in the classroom environment. Um, we see the, those happen being utilized a lot just because a lot of times the tables in the classroom move around, especially now that we're flipping the classroom, as Paul talked about earlier. When you're in the, in the, when you're in the classroom, you're actually doing the project, you're going to be working in a collaboration group, people move around, you want to make sure that that pickup is constantly happening throughout the whole space. So having the microphones and speakers off the table, it's really important for, for that type of environment. Um, our spider series, that's a tabletop, either conference phone or USB speaker phones. Those can actually also be ceiling mounted, which is a really cool feature that those offer as well. So that you get that flexibility there. I mean, our Condor microphone array, that's a microphone array. It's perfect for AV cards, perfect for a few lecture capturing applications, which I'm gonna show in a bit. Mm -hmm. um, which we have a lot of different universities who are utilizing that right now. Um, and that um, is a microphone array that you place on the wall and it allows pickup of up to 30 feet in acoustically treated type rooms um, without having to wire anything whatsoever. So again, that type of um, installation allows that flexibility in the environment, which in, in classroom environments, we've seen as being a very important um, aspect to have. Perfect. Um, here's the example that I, I was referring to earlier of a condor used in a um, um, in a um, lecture capturing environment, um, and the microphone is um, being placed in, in facing the presenter. Um, what's a cool aspect of using the condor in that way? It allows you know many presenters sometimes don't want to necessarily have a microphone on them or aren't as AV savvy or don't feel comfortable utilizing um, or taking that type of control. Um, this allows the IT department just to place a microphone in the room and it just picks up the presenter who can be walking across across the um, his stage or however he's presenting in the room, the front of the room, um, while he's talking to the students and get a full capture of his lecture. Um, so that is a really cool utilization of our condor in that environment. Um, and we see that being utilized a lot for that application. It has a simple USB connection into whatever PC or whatever software you're using to record it. And that's it. You don't really have to do anything more than that to utilize that product in that environment. And again, huge pickup range allows it to be utilized like that. Um, here's a great example of a classroom environment um, using our Stingray provides for you all the features that you'll need to know, you'll need to have in that room from anything, the connectivity to a media player to play videos um, for the students in the classroom, um, a microphones and speakers in the ceiling, connects into your video conferencing application, really simple and straightforward. This um, um, diagram, plus many more actually, are available on our website, basically for almost any environment that you can run into. So currently, I believe there's about 15 or 20 different diagrams over there and that's yep. looking to be expanded um, as well. So we, just, there. we have this choose your room tab on our website, phnxaudio.com, and we've created these graphics for you. It really doesn't make it any easier um, to see exactly what you need to set up a room and kind of how to set it up. So take a lot of the guesswork out of the equation here. 
Yeah, and here's, I think, just a, a few, you know, some of the universities and some of the rooms that they're being installed right now. Um, the rooms that you can see over here are anything, um, two of them have, the first two have condors installed in the wall. I think it's really interesting that it's really hard to see the condor in the environment, um, which I think it's an important aspect mm -hmm. uh, to not necessarily feel or see the technology in the room. You just want it to be there and work. Um, mm -hmm. So in all three of these use cases, allows kind of that flexible environment where people can move around, study, do their collaborative work, and it all can be recorded, transmitted, broadcasted through video conferencing, webinars, whatever type of application you want to use as well. Okay, and we'll hand it back over to PTC Optics. You guys had mentioned the AV car. I think that's a really great idea and interesting application. Yeah. You know, you're pairing both of our products on the AV car and to have something that's portable or maybe rentable by different professors for specific events. It's cool that we've both got kind of portable products in that way. Yeah, I really, that's, that's such a good idea. Now, this case study, the University of Southern California, this is at the Keck School of Medicine. And we just published two really great behind the scenes videos that you guys can check out on our YouTube channel. What this gives you a good idea of what a really well-funded program is doing to help all of the teachers, professors, even researchers create online video content. Because let's be honest, this is not something that teachers generally know about. And they honestly right. don't have the resources a lot of times to do lecture capture. Of course, we're trying to help put the, the resources in every classroom, but here's a couple of the things that they're doing today. So one is they have training videos. So they're creating training videos to help, whether it's from a research perspective or from a medical medicine uh, procedure, they're doing really nice high quality videos. They actually use a green screen so they can put any content they want behind the professor or uh, research, research administrator. They're also doing what they call new style slide presentations. So with the green screen, they can actually have the presenter in front of the slides. So basically the type of presentation we're using right now might be behind us and we would be able to point at it like mm -hmm. a weather forecaster. Kind of like a weather forecaster, <laughs> which they really like. The next thing they're doing is interviews. So a lot of times there might be a, a topic that requires discussion. Mm -hmm. And this is an easy way for professors to really review the content in a natural discussion way. And that we find that that's really uh, helpful. And then they're doing something called chalk talks. And this is really great. They use an annotation software like we're using today. And they'll annotate like, almost like a chalkboard, but digitally. So you can see what they're writing behind them. So in this scenario, I guess your audiovisual department would have some sort of space that was set aside just for this type of content creation, a studio, if you will. Yes, this is a studio environment, but I believe on the next slide or maybe the following, it does get into the classrooms and kind of an overall perspective. So here on this next slide here, we can see that they have a teleprompter, so it helps uh, if there's really high-end uh, presentations that need to be done, the professors can actually read from the teleprompter here. This goes over a little bit of the tech that they're using. This is all available uh, in our video, so I won't, I won't spend too much time on this. But I think on the next slide, it gives us a nice high-level overview of some of the things that they're thinking about. So what does distance learning really mean? You know, how are we going to deliver this content to the students? Mm -hmm. So one way that they're doing it is they're using Vimeo. Vimeo has a professional um, content delivery network. So that would be for public facing content. They don't necessarily want to put it on YouTube because they want to have some more professional level um, abilities to have content management control. Another learning management system that's quite popular is called Moodle. So this is where the students enroll in the classroom, and this is where they can have that kind of online class experience. Something to consider, I think that so many universities and colleges around the United States at least have some sort of online management system already in place. Look into that and see what the video elements might offer and what you might already have at your disposal for your school's online learning management system. A lot of them have a video element already available, like Moodle or um, Blackboard. Uh, what are some of the other ones off the top um, of my head? There's Moodle, Blackboard, Kaltura. Kaltura, uh, Desire to P. Learn is one I think you had at West D2L, yep. D2L. Yep, so there you go. That's definitely one that I see being really popular in the education space. So that's on the video on-demand side. That's how we deliver the video securely. 
But there's also the need from time to time to live stream. So whether the students are, or is a big announcement, is it a graduation, is it a private event that the whole school needs to know about, or large um, areas of, of people, these are really big universities sometimes, they're using something called Mediasite. And Mediasite gives you the ability to have secure live streaming locally on their local area network. And then finally, they're also obviously doing online collaboration. And so that could be anything from a Cisco WebEx call with a bunch of professors, mm -hmm. or it could be a Adobe Connect, which is really learning a student focus that allows students to ask questions and be part of an online classroom, whether they're in India, China, doesn't matter, right? These could be worldwide classrooms connected with online collaboration software. And I think there's one more slide. This just shows a little bit about what their studio looks like. Again, we just posted a great behind the scenes video on this case study. You guys should check out on our YouTube and Facebook channels. Perfect. Now here's a really cool slide that kind of shows the pairings of your audio and your video together and which room that's, uh, that's like ideal for, right? So right. You know, your small rooms also considered your huddle room typically. Um, you know, we think that the spider is really perfect for that. There's the spider series, um, three different products that fit really well in that room. Um, and also what's a cool feature about this, this smart spider here, this MT503, is you can ceiling mount it. So it gives you a lot of options. Um, you know, I'll, I'll just run through these and then you can kind of give a, a, a quick look at the, the cameras for the rooms, but then also with the medium sized room, Condor microphone array. You know, we see the, the optimal distance in an acoustically treated room is about 15 feet. This, this does a great job there. Um, in a large room, MT700, which is our Stingray. Um, or Stingray DSP mixer, you can daisy chain up to 15 of these units. Um, so it mm -hmm. doesn't matter how large your room is, there's a lot of options there. Um, and then lastly, a lecture hall. We kind of touched on that a little bit, um, but our Condor expansion kit, which takes a Stingray, or as many Stingrays as you'd like, up to 15, of course, um, and you connect them to our Condor uh, microphone arrays, and you just you have this solution that yet solves another problem for, for, for another room that you may uh, encounter. Yeah, so really you've got a solution here for any size uh, space. We do offer 12x, 20x, and 30x optical zoom with our cameras. And Phoenix did a great job of pairing uh, these elements together on which size uh, room would be appropriate for which camera. The smaller rooms, the 12x, which I believe Phoenix is using right now is a good representation for that. Your medium-sized room, you won't want to start thinking about the 20x or even to a large room, the 20x or 30x, and you're going to max out at 30x there. We have some Q and A's here, um, some more technical questions. So going through them. Yeah, there was one question that came up earlier. I believe it was from Dan Case. I just want to address it where you asked about the. Let's uh, jump back to this slide. Yeah, to the uh, lecture hall, um, lecture capturing environment. Just to emphasize, the condor in this use case is picking up the presenter. It's not placed in order to pick up the room. Obviously, that's a really huge room. That if you want to pick up that whole audience. That's a completely, you know, that would probably be a Stingray type of environment with multiple microphones placed around. Um, an application, though, that we do run into a lot is where only the presenter needs to be captured um, in that scenario. So then that can be recorded, put up on a live demand so that students who couldn't attend or, you know, for online courses, they can utilize that same course that he already did um, time and time again. So um, that was the application that that was used for, and I hope that answers your question. To also answer one more question about um, the Condor microphone array that we're using right now, um, currently it is mounted right above our monitor. Um, we see it very oftentimes mounted below the monitor or to the sides in the Condor expansion kit. So there's a lot, there's a lot of options there, um, but uh, it can also be ceiling mounted. We don't recommend that as a use. We, we typically, you know, you'd want to put yeah. either a smart spider mounted on the ceiling um or you know our, our stingray with um yeah with ceiling microphones yeah it, it the condor itself is designed to be facing the room you know that's uh that's where the beams of the device are designated in order for pickup so um 150 degrees in front of it um and then again based on the acoustic the distance um 15 to 30 feet based on how acoustically treated the environment that you're putting it in is Okay, Last question. chance for questions, everybody. If you've got the questions, let's put them in there because we are about to wrap up, I believe. This is the end of the last slide. So That's amazing. We hit 10.30 on the dot, so we'll still stay here wow. for a couple more minutes for questions. Um, I'm amazed we got through all that uh, amazing <laughs> Great job, guys. 
in 30 minutes. But yeah, we'll wait here a few more minutes. Uh, we have some questions coming in. I did want to, you know, we're still on this slide here. So if you, you know, would like to learn any more information, here's the way to contact us. Um, some, a lot of our social handles are PHNX Audio, um, but you can also search directly on those social platforms like LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, for PHNX Audio Technologies, and it'll show up there. Uh, I'd encourage you to follow us on LinkedIn. We constantly have updates. We're very active on social media, and we're constantly you know, creating new case studies and customer stories. We have some uh, really awesome videos that we like to uh, produce around that, so go check them out on our YouTube channel. I think there's a question over there. Sorry, uh, Tess, I cut you off. Go ahead. No problem. Yeah, no, there's just, uh, I think, a few more questions that came in through there, and I just want to make sure we address them. Um, one from Kenny Haptons. Um, um, no, I don't believe that is possible, Kenny. Kenny is asking if we can connect a Phoenix Audio product directly to the um, eighth inch audio line in Jack. Um, is that maybe Paul? Maybe you can answer that. Is that something that can you connect actually, an audio device directly into your camera? So you can actually connect audio directly into the camera. Uh, there's a 3.5 millimeter input okay. that will embed the audio into the IP stream and mm -hmm. the HDMI stream, and that is for line level okay. audio inputs. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, so we our products are line level um audio devices so we can definitely then provide an audio stream into the device and then that way um, um you can utilize that as a kind of a single stream into whatever device you're using Perfect. okay yeah um was there any other question i feel like there's yes, another uh, question does that came the stingray up. take standard analog microphones or does it use specific mics yeah so uh larry great question Stingray can work with any type of microphone that's out there. It has four mic inputs and four line inputs. So based on the type of microphone that you want to use, whether a line level microphone or a mic level microphone, um, you can uh, you know, use any microphone basically you want. Um, and we have a whole list of already tested certified microphones on our website, anything from tabletop mics to ceiling mics from multiple manufacturers from Biodynamic, Clock Audio, um, sure, um, I'm probably forgetting something. CTG Audio, who have some really great microphones as well. Um, so all these different microphones, there's a list, um, um, and you can pick the right microphone that fits for your environment or whatever your favorite is. Another thing that, by the way, we do offer, if there's a microphone that is not available or is not listed on our website, um, we can work either with you or directly with the manufacturer that of the microphone that um, you prefer. We can in-house test the microphone for you, let you know that um, it works and even provide you a recommended setting for that specific um, microphone. Mm -hmm. All right, a few more questions here. Um, will you post this recording um, on your website? Yes, uh, our team is going to create um, a YouTube video of this recording. We are currently using Zoom, as you know. So the recording um, will be converted over to a YouTube video. Also, anyone who didn't make this webinar um, will be viewing it based, uh, based on the link that we send you right after this. We're also going to be sending some other resources like the, um, the diagram you saw of how a room is set up, um, specifically that classroom setup. Um, that a file will be attached to the email and um, along with the case study video as well, I believe, right? Okay, yes, yeah. that's correct. And also, I was going to say one more thing that we're including in there. Oh, this slide deck. We'll, we'll make sure you have access to that as well. So, many questions around that. We'll give you as many resources as you need. Um, yeah, Terry, I think, has a question here. Um, can, can you add multiple cameras and microphones to one DSP unit and have it work with Zoom? Um, so, the way our DSP works, you can connect to it multiple microphones. Um, like I mentioned earlier, each Stingray has four microphone inputs. If you need more than four microphones in a room, you just daisy chain another unit. Simple Ethernet connection between the two units. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to the cameras, Paul, I'll let you answer that question, Paul or Tess. Um, how do you put multiple cameras in one environment? I, I know you guys obviously, I think, can do that. Um, if you can elaborate. Yeah. So let's go ahead and just show that. We, Mike, what you want to do is, so basically as many cameras as you have, there's a, there's a shortcut in Zoom. You do Control-N, and Control-N will cycle through 
all of the cameras that are available in Zoom. So if you have multiple USB ports, we actually have an SDI capture card. So we have eight cameras available in Zoom at any, any time. So um, we can switch between up to eight cameras. It just depends on how you want to set it up. That's fantastic. Awesome. Okay. Through these. Yep. And you can obviously daisy chain our cameras. We have RS-232 connectivity in the back of the cameras. So you can connect multiple cameras together through serial or IP. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, another question came in about the Stingray. So Paul, you're asking if you can connect, can connect XLR microphones into the Stingray. So the Stingray has um, Phoenix connector, terminal block connectors on it. That said, we have uh, a, an accessory that we offer that you can purchase, which is basically an XLR to terminal block converter. Um, the part number on that is the MT720. It comes with all the necessary wiring. You know, that way you can take your XLR microphone, connect it into the converter, then you have a simple cable going into the mic input on uh, the Stingray. So, um, yeah, to, to your point, you can use any microphone, including XLR microphones with the Stingray. Hopefully that answered your question. Fantastic question. There's one more over here in the chat. So oh, just uh, thank you, Bennett, for attending the <laughs> webinar. Yeah, thank appreciate you. it. Glad you enjoyed it. Um, all right, guys, we're going to wrap this up. If you have any more questions, you know how to get a hold of us. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. We had a great time. Hopefully, we yeah. can do this again soon. You want to say uh, anything else? Yeah, no, Paul was just continuing with his uh, uh, questions over there. Yes, there's phantom power onto the mics. So, okay, yeah. got it. Uh, thank you, everybody, for attending. Thank you to PTZ Optics. Really appreciate your input on cameras. I personally learned a few things <laughs> about cameras that I didn't know uh, before, so hopefully... Uh, uh, the attendees uh, got some great stuff as well. Perfect. If we didn't get to your questions, we'll try to reach out to you right after the webinar um, answer those. Paul, you want to sign off? Thanks, everybody. It's been great being here. Everybody enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Make sure you go ahead and follow at PTZ Optics on social media, of course. Yes. Awesome. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye, everybody. Okay. Bye, everybody.